By far, the service that comes up the most on the exam is Amazon SageMaker. SageMaker is basically the heart of Amazon's machine learning offering, so we're going to spend a lot of time on it. Let's start at a high level. So what's SageMaker for? Well, it's intended to manage the entire machine learning workflow. So ideally, this is what your process looks like in the real world. You start off by fetching and cleaning and preparing some training data and doing all your feature engineering on it. And then you feed that into a model that is trained on that data. And you can evaluate that model and say, okay, it looks good. Let's go ahead and deploy that model, actually use it in production to actually make inferences on observations that we haven't seen before. Now, once that's in production, we can learn from those results, see how well it's actually doing and gather even more information. Use that to fetch, clean, and prepare even more data and maybe use those learnings to do a better job of feature engineering. Then the cycle begins again. We'll take that new data, train our model again, deploy it again, take in more data, train the model again, deploy it again, and hopefully things just keep getting better and better and better over time. SageMaker allows you to manage all of this stuff, so it will spin up training instances to make your training happen at large scale. It gives you notebooks where you can actually do your data preparation, and it will actually spin up instances in EC2 to actually deploy your model and sit there as an endpoint waiting to make inferences in production. Architecturally, this is the idea. So let's start at the bottom here. When we're doing our training, our training data that we've already prepared will be sitting in an S3 bucket somewhere. And SageMaker's job is to go out there and provision a bunch of training hosts to actually do that training on. Now the code that it uses, the actual model itself, comes from a Docker image that's registered in Elastic Container Registry. So it will take that training code from a Docker image, deploy that out to a fleet of hosts to actually do that training, and get that training data from S3. When it's done, it will save that trained model and any artifacts from it also to S3. At this point, we're ready to deploy that model and actually put it out there in production, right? So at this point, we're also going to have some Docker image in ECR. That's the inference code. It's uh, potentially a lot simpler. Its only job is to take in incoming requests and use that saved model to actually make inferences uh, based on that request. So it pulls in our inference code from ECR. Again, it will spin up as many hosts as it needs to actually provide endpoints and serve those requests coming in. And it will spin up endpoints as well that we can use to communicate with the outside world. So now we might have some client application that's sending in requests to our model, and that endpoint will then very quickly make those predictions and send them back. You know, for example, maybe we have a client that's taking pictures and we want to know what's in the picture. It might say, hey, endpoint, here's a picture. Tell me what's in it. It would then refer to that inference code and the trained model artifacts that we have to say, okay, I think it's a picture of a cat and send that back to the client application. As a, it's just one of many examples. There are a couple of ways to work with SageMaker. Probably the most common is by using the SageMaker notebook. And it's just a notebook instance running on an EC2 instance somewhere that you specify. And you spin these up from the console and it's very easy to use as you'll see. Uh, your SageMaker notebook has access to S3, so it can actually access its training and validation data there or whatever else you need. Uh, you can do things like use scikit-learn or PySpark or TensorFlow within them if you want to. And it has access to a wide variety of built-in models. So there are pre-built Docker images out there that contain a wide variety of models you can just use out of the box. And we're going to spend a lot of time talking about those. You can also spin up those training instances from within your notebook. So within your very notebook there, you can say, go spin up a whole fleet of servers that, that are dedicated specialized machine learning hosts to execute that training on. And when your training is done and saved to S3, you can also from the notebook say, okay, deploy that model to a whole fleet of endpoints and allow me to make predictions at large scale. And you can even say from the notebook, go ahead and like do an automated hyperparameter tuning job to actually try different parameters on my model and try to find the ideal set of parameters to make that model work as well as possible. All this can be done from within a notebook. You can also do a lot of this from the SageMaker console as well. Uh, the notebook obviously gives you more flexibility because you can actually write code there. Uh, but sometimes you'll use them together. So a pretty common thing is to kick off a training job or a hyperparameter tuning job from within your notebook, then switch back to the console and just uh, keep an eye on it, see how well it's doing. Let's talk about the data preparation stage and how that interacts with SageMaker. So again, SageMaker expects your data to come from S3 somewhere. So we kind of assume that you've already prepared it using some other means if you need to. The format it expects will vary with the algorithm, with the actual training code that you're deploying from ECR, right? 
for the built-in algorithms, that's often record I.O. protobuf format, which is just a data format that's very well suited as the input to deep learning and other machine learning models. Uh, but usually these algorithms will also just take, you know, straight up CSV data or what, whatever you might have. But record I.O. protobuf will usually be a lot more efficient if you can get your data into that format. And you can do that pre-processing within your SageMaker notebook if you want to. That's fine. You can also integrate Spark with SageMaker, which is pretty cool. So if you want to use Apache Spark to pre-process your data at massive scale, you can actually use SageMaker within Spark. And we'll see an example of that later on in the course. You also have the usual tools at your disposal that you can use within the Jupyter Notebook, Scikit-Learn, NumPy, Pandas. If you want to use that to slice and dice and manipulate your data before you actually feed it into your training job, uh, that's totally fine. Once you're ready to train, you'll just create a training job, either from the console or from your notebook. All it needs is the URL to S3 where your training data lives. That's already been prepared. Uh, you need to specify what machine learning compute resources that you want to use for it. That's the specific EC2 instances that you're going to use to do this training on. Those could be compute nodes. They could be GPU nodes like P2s or P3s, whatever's appropriate to the training algorithm that you're using. And you'll need a URL to S3 to actually put your trained model artifacts into. Finally, you need a path to ECR to actually tell it where to get the training code from to run on those ML compute resources. That's all you need. Uh, so there's different ways to doing training. I mean, like I said, there's a huge variety of built-in algorithms that we're going to talk about a lot. So you just need to know where in ECR those lives to use them. You can also use Spark ML lib for training. You can use your own custom code that just lives in your own Docker image. And you can also have your own custom code written on top of TensorFlow or MXNet. That's also easy to do. And we'll have a lab about that later on. There are also algorithms you can purchase from the AWS Marketplace, where you can purchase access to a Docker image that contains a SageMaker training uh, algorithm if you want to as well. Once your model is trained, you need to deploy it. And again, this can just be done from a notebook. Uh, you'll save the trained model to S3 somewhere. And at that point, there's two things you can do with that trained model. One is you can ask SageMaker to spin up a fleet of persistent endpoints to make individual inferences and predictions on demand from some sort of external application. You can also do batch transforms if you know you just have an existing set of uh, observations that you want to make predictions for en masse. That can work too. And there's a lot of cool options there when you're deploying a trained model. It has something called inference pipelines if you need to chain different steps together as you're doing your inferences it has something called SageMaker Neo that allows you to deploy your train models all the way to edge devices. It has something called Elastic Inference, which you can use to accelerate how quickly that uh, deployed model actually comes back by having dedicated uh, instance types that are just made for accelerating that. And it also has automatic scaling capabilities where it can automatically scale up and down the number of endpoints you have as needed. We'll talk about that more in detail later, but for now, Let's start digging into some of those built-in algorithms to give you a better feel of what SageMaker can do.